What is going on everybody? Today we're going to be recreating Breath of the Wild in Godot in one hour. This is not actually what we're going to be doing, but that intro is probably something that sounds kind of familiar if you've been browsing the devlog side of YouTube, which is what I want to talk a bit more about in today's video. If you have no clue what devlogs are, it's short for development log, where you make a video usually about the progress you're making on your game, your brand new game, and you want to share with the world what you're working on, showcasing it and just talking about it with, of course, partially the hope that maybe you can use it as some marketing. And I recently decided, hey, I need a little bit of a break. I don't want to keep working on my own games. Let's watch a hundred devlogs. I took some notes along the way and researched all of the games talked about in those videos. And I want to go over the results of that and just give you some more of my thoughts as a YouTuber, a game dev content creator, and someone who has done devlogs before of how do they work behind the scenes and are they worth it? Why do people keep making them? Because the first thing that I want to talk about is wishlist. That's what most people think about immediately when, hey, they see those devlogs, they get hundreds of thousands of views sometimes. So obviously they should be getting some good wishlist numbers as well, right? And the first answer here is nope, not at all. I looked up all of the games covered in those devlogs and whilst some of them definitely had pretty good wishlist numbers, like some at like 18,000 and whatnot, most of those wishlists did not come from their devlogs as far as I could tell, but from like external press, external influencers covering their games demo and things like that, and not actually the devlogs themselves. There are also games that have only used devlogs for marketing, and honestly, the results for that are kind of miserable. We're talking about an average conversion rate of 0.8% of views becoming wishlists. This is using the, the game analytics side where you can get a pretty good estimation in my experience of hey how many wishlists does this game have right now and that is not good let's be honest with that and there's actually a, a second thing that i want to talk about as someone who's made devlogs before is that wishlists gained from devlogs also don't convert as well like once the game comes out so normally we're talking about a 10 percent wishlist conversion rate which means like hey if you have a thousand wishlists and you launch your game you'll get about 100 sales you're looking at a percentage that is much, much lower. Think about two to 5% if you're actually making devlogs and your game is coming out and most of your wishlists come from these devlogs. Because why is this? We keep yelling it at you, but sometimes people don't want to listen. So we have to keep repeating it. Devlogs are not targeting players. They're targeting other game developers most of the time. We'll talk about the different styles of content in a second, but most of the devlogs that you're watching most likely is you watching them from an interest of the entire experience of, hey, making a game, and you're like, hey, let's give them a pity wishlist, let's see if we can bump up the algorithm a little bit for Steam, because, hey, I want wishlists, they probably want wishlists, so we do all of that ourselves. Whilst that's noble, if you're looking at the 0.8%, that means that even on videos getting hundreds of thousands of views, the conversion just isn't there. Now, that's a little bit of a side point here, is that out of those 100 devlogs that I saw, about 30% of them don't even have a Steam page. They just make devlogs for the love of the game is what you may think. And it's actually also maybe not entirely true. I'll talk about that in a second as well. There's some other reasons why people make devlogs that are much more incentivizing. But that is like my first thing of devlogs where people don't even have a Steam page. It's something that I personally, and this is my bias, I do not like that. If you're a developer who makes devlogs and if it's like your first devlog zero, sure, whatever, maybe I can still accept it. But otherwise, if you're making devlogs and you don't have a Steam page or anything like that, what are you doing? Because maybe it's not the devlog itself that gets the wishlist. This is me giving you some extra advice. But the fact that you have a devlog gives you something interesting to talk about when you go to things like press and influencers. That is something much more interesting where, sure, the devlog itself will not be the big wishlist getter. And sure, that's why you may be like, oh, I don't need a store page. But having a devlog, and this is once again, like I said, my advice, is a great point to also do something like you're reaching out to press and be like, hey, we just released our first trailer and our first devlog for whatever game we're working on. Or go into influence or like, hey, we just released devlog one and we have an accompanying build for the game as well. If you're interested in that, that is things that content creators who can help you much more than you making your own devlogs are interested in instead. Because this leads into what styles of devlogs are there and which styles of devlogs get the most use. And the first and most performing devlogs are the ones where it's, you know, one guy, the developer who just screen records his OBS and it's like, he got Unity open and it's like in his monotone voice of like, yeah, so I made this prototype in one week and whatever. And it's like, 
it's not engaging content. These are videos that generally don't go past the 500 views ever. And yeah, the wishlist you're getting from that is basically zero. If that's the style of devlogs you make, yeah, don't bother with a Steam page because you'll get probably more wishlists just organically from Steam at that point. And it's, it can be good to do those like monologuing devlogs if you just wanna get better at talking on camera because we all have to start somewhere, but they're not good content wise. What is definitely the meta in terms of devlogs is also not videos like this, where it's like kind of not really interesting. And with that, I mean, hey, the content I talk about may be interesting, but the editing and things like that, there's no explosions and whatever. There's no green screened version of me talking and everything. That is what basically every video has. It's the Danny style, basically. And most of the devlogs are a watered down version of whatever Danny did a few years ago when he was at the peak of his devlog game, getting millions of views on his devlogs. Now, you can make a honestly like 80% level of quality video in the style of what Danny did with all of the animations, a lot of B-roll. These are videos that take a long, long time to edit, by the way, guys. We're talking about probably a week plus and you can get 5,000 views. And that is an, I would say, median result. That is not bad, not good either. It's, you know, it's what you can expect. There is definitely making devlogs will always give you more views than the, some of the videos we make on our own channel just regularly talking about game dev. That's something I noticed as well. Our devlogs, they do perform pretty well view-wise because it's something people are interested in. But spending a week of time you could be developing on your game to instead make devlogs isn't always the most worth it. And then yeah, the games that perform the best view-wise are the ones where, hey, the editing is absolutely top-notch. There's a lot of good script writing because those devlogs, they have like multiple pages of actual full-on script, sentence by sentence, everything is written out. It's not off the cuff like what I'm doing here, where I just have some talking points and I go through it like I'm having a conversation with a normal person. You have a lot of jokes, you have a lot of effects, like basically every two seconds, whatever is on screen completely changes to keep your attention and things like that. They have the like YouTuber Mr. Beast style voice of like, I made a game in one year, this is how it looks or something. And those videos do perform really good view wise. And this very engaging style of editing is also at the end of the day, why these devlogs can get a lot of views because devlogs are not just for advanced developers to watch, but it's also for just like, it's the gateway drug. It's what potential future game devs will probably be looking at as the first time. You don't really show the real side of game development. You say like, oh yeah, I was hitting my head against the wall for a week with a stupid bug. And then I decided to whatever, like some funny skits, like go and uh, take a hike in nature. And then suddenly it was fixed. And it's like, that's not true development. It's just showing only the cool parts often because that's the parts that people are interested in as well. So because of that, they can go for that very wide appeal and they can go and get a lot of views. And with these numbers, this is where the dark secrets of devlogs come in because you need to remember, I'm a YouTuber. I get emails about sponsorships multiple times a week where, hey, Brilliant or Skillshare or Squarespace or whoever wants to sponsor this video. And that's why I'm very happy to say that this video has not been sponsored by Skillshare, but a lot of devlogs are. And how these work is generally you get paid per 1000 views with a fixed rate. So for things like Brilliant, it's about $20 per 1000 views. So if you then do a quick calculation, hey, if I make 100,000 views on my devlog, which is not extraordinarily high, and it's like relatively reasonable. If you just get lucky once, you can actually get 100,000 views on a devlog with some good editing and things like that. That is suddenly a $2,000 payday from a single video. And when I was looking at my 100 devlogs, that was something I tracked as well. How many of the videos had sponsors and what kind of sponsors did they have? And did I know some of these sponsors? The answer is yes. More than half of all the devlogs I watched, and once again, keep that bias in mind, I mainly saw bigger channels already, were sponsored. And we're talking about big bucks if we look in total, the amount of views they got on their devlogs, the sponsors and things like that, where realistically, and I keep saying this, but people hate me when I say this, they are more incentivized to keep making engaging devlogs than to actually make a game. Because making a game is fucking hard at the end of the day. If you want to do it well, and you want to do the marketing, and you want to do all of that, where, you know, you can also just stay a YouTuber. 
and get some sponsor deals and make more money. There is just more money in YouTube than in game dev. That's why our YouTube still exists as well, alongside working on our own games. Because if we didn't have this YouTube and the good sponsor deals and things like that, because we have the scale of an audience, well, our studio probably wouldn't exist anymore. So it's not like, oh, all sponsors are bad. We do sponsors ourselves and things like that. But I think that is something that you need to keep in mind. If you love watching devlogs and it's like oh why do none of these developers release their games or barely release their games and we're often talking about hey multiple years of development and then finally only they have like their steam page or whatever well it's because realistically they'll be making more money just from talking about their game because if you look at median game revenues they are at about a thousand two thousand dollars per game on steam so yeah, making the devlogs is more valuable often. And another thing here that kind of leads into that and the, the whole concept of, oh, abandoning one game to get started on a new devlog series is that devlogs deteriorate over time, usually in how many views you're going to get. There is definitely, if you want to make devlogs, start with devlog zero. Always call them devlog zero. And then the second video you make is devlog one. And basically after that, you either release your game or you just start a new devlog series because every devlog number basically that it increases so from devlog 0 to devlog 1 to devlog 2 your views will be slashed in about half normally and this is pretty much the case with all of the devlog series that use numbers in their devlogs which is why most of the devlog series also after devlog number 2 they just drop the numbering and they just call it devlog because if we're talking about hey first video gets 200k views second video gets 100k third video gets 50k as a creator, it can be very demoralizing to suddenly be like, oh, I'm having half the performance of my previous video, even though my game looks better, my editing may be better and all of that. It's just the fact that people don't want to jump in on something that they can't start from the beginning. So that's why drop the numbering ideally after like devlog zero and one and just release. So all of this, of course, leads to the question, should you make devlogs? This is something that people have talked about on YouTube before. The answer to this is pretty much an overwhelming no, unless you want to do it purely for the love of the game. If you want to do it for the love of the game, absolutely, you can go for it. But don't think that, I mean, we made that mistake. That's how this YouTube channel started as well. Be like, hey, oh, I have no budget for marketing, but I want to make a game and I want to get a wishlist for my game. I'll just make devlogs and that's going to carry my marketing. That is not going to happen, unfortunately. It can, in very rare cases, do work. There are certain devlogs where the fact that they made devlog content on either YouTube or TikTok or whatever has given them a substantial, very large amount of wish lists. But most of the time, that isn't the case. Because also, once again, remember, don't make your devlogs assuming that you'll get 100,000 wish lists. You'll probably have like one or two shots and you'll get like 5,000 wish lists guaranteed, assuming you spent a decent chunk of time editing your videos and things like that. But is that enough really to justify it? Most of the time, not. For Unicycle Pizza Time, to bring it back to a personal thing, Thomas was really adamant on, hey, we have to make a devlog. I want to make a devlog. And because I'm the editor of this channel, I had to edit that devlog. And after that, I told him, Thomas, look, I love you, my dude, but we are not doing this again. I probably haven't felt that miserable editing any video as with the devlog, because for me at least, it feels very soulless, it feels very disingenuous, it doesn't actually accurately portray how does game development really work, but it is unfortunately what works. That video was like our top performing video of that month, basically. And yeah, those are good things to know, but Earnings wise, that video, wishlist wise, that video, it just wasn't good. We had about 1% view to wishlist conversion rate, and then the wishlists to sales conversion was basically non existent. Like all of our sales for that game basically come from countries where our audience isn't based in. So that once again is like, yeah, I spent, I think the total editing time on that video was like eight or nine hours. And on, of course, the scripting, the, the recording, and everything like that, it's just not worth it. I think there are better things to do, such as just working on your game or taking that same time that you would have making your own devlog which i would say is like 15 hours or so that is enough to do an entire influencer marketing campaign basically looking for youtubers who want to play your game who have pre-existing audiences who are in your genre like city builders or indie games or cozy games or whatever reaching out to them annoying them being like hey go and play my game and the wishlist conversion you'll get there view to wishlist is more about five to seven percent and you actually have a ten percent wishlist to sale conversion from those numbers so devlogs if you want to watch them and it's purely entertainment for you and it's just relaxing that's good 
that. Power to you, I don't mind. It was definitely entertaining for me as well going through the 100 devlogs, but I did have that feeling of, ooh, knowing what real game dev, whatever you may call it, is, it is not what they portray on the devlogs. It's very much, like I said, a gateway drug. It's what makes you feel happy and things like that, but it's not going to be the thing that is actual game dev. It's not going to be the experience that you're going through. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments down below. I do respond to them. I do read every single one of them. And apart from that, we make two videos every week talking about game development and the things that I learn along the way. If that's something that you're interested in, then be sure to head down below as well and subscribe as it makes me happy. And you get these videos delivered twice a week directly to your subscription box. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.